In this example, I want to verify the following identity. So when you first look at this identity, you should notice one very important thing. The arguments of some of the trig functions are 2 theta, some of the other ones are theta. So I have a mixture of arguments of double angle and single angle. And on the right hand side, all I have is an argument is a single angle. So this tells me I'm going to have to use double angle identities on the left hand side to simplify the expression and write everything in terms of just theta. So let me put over here my double angle identities. So we want to simplify the left hand side. So my left hand side of this identity is sine of 2 theta over sine theta minus the cosine of 2 theta over cosine theta. So let's start with the first expression. The sine of 2 theta, that's the easier one. It has just one version. The sine of 2a is 2 sine a cosine a. So the sine of 2 theta is 2 sine theta cosine theta. And I'm going to divide that by sine theta. And then before I look at my next expression, what I want to notice with this first expression is notice something very nice happens. My sine thetas reduce and I land up with 2 cosine theta for my first term. So the reason I did that before anything else because notice cosine 2 theta is the one that has three different versions. And you have to decide which one to pick. Now all three versions will work, but one of them will work a lot quicker than the other. And so what I want to do is, oops, I didn't mean to write up there, sorry, is that I want to figure out what I have to write cosine 2 theta as, but don't forget I'm going to divide it by cosine theta. So that kind of gives me a hint that Maybe something nice is going to happen that happened in the first term. So I'm going to pick the version of cosine 2 theta that just has cosine theta in it. And hopefully something nice will happen. So the cosine of 2a is 2 cosine squared a minus 1. So the cosine of 2 theta is 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. Now be careful at this stage, I cannot reduce this cosine theta with one of these because the cosine theta has to distribute into both of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this second term up into two terms. I'm going to have minus the quantity 2 cosine squared theta over cosine theta minus 1 over cosine theta. So I'm doing the reverse of adding and subtracting fractions. I have something over a common denominator. I can break it up into each term in the numerator divided by cosine theta. So now be very careful. I need to put these parentheses in there because that negative has to distribute to both terms that follow. So my first term is going to give me 2 cosine theta minus, this time just for the heck of it I'm going to write this out the long way so you can see exactly what is going on. Because remember 2 cosine squared theta means 2 cosine theta times cosine theta all divided by cosine theta. Now what's my sign? A negative times a negative is a positive. What is 1 over cosine theta secant theta? So what do I have left? I have 2 cosine theta minus, now here, 
These three terms are multiplied, so I can just reduce one of these with one of these. So I get 2 cosine theta plus secant theta. Well, now you can see the first two terms, 2 cosine theta minus 2 cosine theta, are going to add up to 0, so I get 0 plus secant theta. And what is 0 plus secant theta? It is just secant theta, which is my right-hand side, because remember, that is what we were, whoops, where's my pen? That is what I was trying to prove the left-hand side equaled. So I am done. I have proved the left-hand side equals the right-hand side.